What's going on everyone? It's Jamie here from Shopify Masterclass and today we're going to be covering how to structure your customer emails so you can have really good support tickets, clean conversations, and overall make that customer feel like they've had a really good experience with your Shopify store. So we're going to go over how you can structure your emails in this video, so make sure you stay to the end of it. And before we dive into it, I just want to quickly thank our sponsor ProfitCalc, which allows you to do your profit calculations in just one click, saving you a ton of time. So let's dive into how to structure your emails here. And so before we dive into that as well, I put up some good points here that you always want to keep in mind when writing customer emails. So let's go through this one by one. The first one is going to be always be nice, never be rude. So when you're speaking with the customer, they come to you because they have a question. Maybe they don't know where their product is. Maybe they're a little upset with what they've received. So you always want to be nice here to them. Because creating good customer relationships can be really good for the long term. It can possibly lead to repeat purchases, which are great for your Shopify store. So make sure you're always nice, never rude. It's never really worth being angry as well. This is just so much easier to be nice. Maybe you can get a good review out of it. And it's going to prevent any chargebacks as well, which is something you really don't want for your store. The next one is just going to be ask clarifying questions when needed. You're going to need a solid understanding of the problem. So make sure you dive into your Shopify store order history, make sure you understand what they're saying so you can answer that question fully. The next one is going to be to use emojis. Emojis are great because they add personality to what a text email that has no context in terms of how you're feeling. Humans use emotions a lot when communicating, so emojis are a great way to use that. Make sure you use those smiley faces and laughing faces to help spruce up your conversation and make it feel more personal. The fourth one is going to be add details when necessary. So making sure you add the tracking information or anything along those lines, such as product information as well or shipping information. So the customer really has an understanding of what you're explaining and you're actually answering their question. And the fifth one is going to be use an FAQ database when there. So it does help if you're using a customer service platform such as Help Scout. It's going to have an FAQ there. We can easily pull up answers from repeated questions, saving you time and making sure that the response is detailed for the customer. So let's dive into the meat of it here on how to structure your email. I've created a basic outline of how you want to structure it. And so you always want to use a name at the beginning. So you can say hi, customer name or dear customer name. You could also just replace this to there if they don't have a name there. In terms of the email, you're not sure what it is. Then you're going to say your name. So my name is Jamie. So I'm going to say Jamie here from, I'm not going to change this to Shopify Masterclass. So, so we can introduce you and your company and giving yourself a name is going to make it more personal for the customer as well. Showing that there's a real human being here for them in this conversation. Then you're going to address the problem and make sure you're following the above, being nice, providing clarifying questions, providing the details for the order, making sure you fully answer the customer problem. It's so much easier just to answer it the first time than having to repeat everything again and further frustrate the customer. Because really most customers don't even want to be messaging you. They just want to find that information right away and completely understand what's going on. And so that's going to be the meat of the email. That's really going to change email to email. But if you want to go into a little bit further, it could be restate the problem. So you're going to restate the problem in a way so the customer has cleared in what they're asking and so you fully understand it as well. And lastly, you're going to ask a further clarifying question. You should just ask, let me know if that makes sense. This way you're giving the customer an option to kind of dispute what you said to maybe add further details, but you're leaving that door open if necessary. Lastly, it's always gonna be your signature. So you can put your name, possibly your position as well. Could be the founder, owner, something to show you a little more authority to address and escalate issues to yourself. You have the ability to maybe issue refunds. Sometimes listing founders, good there. You can use some emojis at the bottom as well, then followed by the company name, and that's gonna make it look professional. You can also use different signatures as well. Sometimes you get signatures that will list your social media, list the logo of the company as well, to add further professionalization to your customer emails. And so overall, that's a pretty basic structure there, but one that is tested and true, and I've used many times. And overall, it's just really helped create a consistent form of emails for my customer, saving me time when answering those as well. So overall, this concludes the video on how to structure your customer emails. I hope this was short and sweet here. I try not to add a lot of visuals just to make it fast and easy to understand along with some basic points. If you enjoyed this video, I would love if you hit that like and subscribe button below. If you're interested in ProfitCalc, that's our sponsor there. There's a link in the description below, so make sure you check that out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in our next video.